Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video, another tier list, we're on tiermaker.com again. I love doing these, it gives me a chance to just relax and um, let you guys know about some of the things that I'm thinking about, you know, when it comes to my opinions and stuff. And I know that my opinions never normally line up with other people's. And that is completely fine with me. Completely fine. So, we're ranking all of the Gears... Gears of War games and the DLC. So obviously you've got Hive Busters, Rhyme Shadow and Aftermath as DLCs. And then we've got Gears 1 through 5 um, to rank. Uh, now I'm going to preface this video by saying that I don't think there's a bad Gears of War game. We're missing tactics, but I've never played it, so that's fine. But none of these games are bad. It's 100% worth downloading all of these on Game Pass if you've got it. And playing through them all. They are so... S such good games. Phenomenal games. So I'm going to rank these in order. I'm going to try. So technically Aftermath is the first game in the series. And I thought Aftermath was kind of... It was too short. It had potential. It was too short. It ended really quick. Um... It kind of took the Gears gameplay that we kind of knew. Because this game came out after 3, I think. Or maybe it was just before. But anyway, like it's a lot of... like It's got Horde-based gameplay in a campaign. And people didn't like that. You know, there's a lot of like defend, your, defend sections where you have to put down turrets and just survive waves. People didn't like that. I didn't mind it. I like that kind of gameplay. You know, Horde mode is one of my favourite things to do. So that kind of gameplay didn't bother me. Uh, the characters were great. You know, you had Baird, who we all loved anyway. Paddock, who was like this miserable, smarmy UIR soldier. And it was kind of the first time that we'd been introduced to the different faction. Uh, there was Sophia, who I think was killed off way too quick. Um, she had potential to be a cool character, but you'd never given enough time to kind of like, you know, get used to her and learn about her and stuff like that. And then you had Cole, who, again, we all loved from previous games. Um, the Horde mode in Judgment was terrible. That was really bad. But the campaign, it was decent. It's worth playing to say you've played it, but it, it you're probably not going to go back and play it for a while. Once you've done it. Gears of War 1 is a B tier. Solid B. Average, I think, in terms of all of these. Um, I didn't think Gears of War 1 was that good. Um, it's just alright. Um, it was very, very short and quick. Um, I mean, at the time, it was amazing because you get this big chainsaw gun and you're like, oh, I can kill things. But, yeah, it's just, to me, it was, all, it was okay. I, I think Gears of War 1 was the, probably my least favourite campaign out of all of these. I prefer Judgment, personally. Um, the, ultimate, the Ultimate Edition did kind of fix some of the problems, but there's a lot of, like, the main... Like, the main campaign is still... You know, it's, it is what it is. You're not going to change it, are you? So, that's that. Gears of War 2 is A tier. Gears of War 2 was great. Gears of War took everything that Gears of War 1 did great, and carried it on. And all the things that Gears of War 1 did. Meh. Did it better. Uh, although for most of the game. You're spent underground. All the missions feel different. All the uh, levels feel different. There are like repeating tile sets. That you end up going through. But you are playing like the underground. Locust caves. But all in all. It wasn't. It wasn't bad at all. You know some of the characters were great. You had. Characters like Ty and Dizzy that were kind of meh and bad. Like Ty is so boring, it's unreal. Um, but we had cool characters like Ben Carmine, and when you know we got more of the core four, you know Bear, Cole, Dom, and Marcus. Um, and yeah, I was surprised at how long this game lasted. It's a very very long game, um, like part wise. I can't believe it was as long as it was. Which is a sentence I hear quite a lot. 
But the Gears of War 1 part we finished in 7 videos. Gears of War 2 we did in 11. And I think Gears of War 3 we did in about 14, 15. So, yeah, it's definitely not the longest, but it was very good. Gears of War 3, S tier. The best one out of all of these. 100%. I love Gears of War 3. I have 100% completed everything in the campaign. I've done it on easy, normal, and hard. Probably about three times. I've got all of the collectibles. I did play a shit ton of Horde mode. Like years and years ago. But on my new Xbox or my new account. Obviously none of that's transferred over. Um... But yeah, the Gears of War 3 campaign is great. Anya becomes like a, a core character in the squad. And her character in this is amazing. Um, really, really good character. Um, more markers. Obviously, you get the Dom death, which was emotional. But again, I was never really attached to him as much as other people. Um, Sam. Clayton Carmine. A uh, really cool boss battle at the end. And it kind of... Kind of capped off... The, uh... The game, didn't it? Because then it changed over to a different uh, publisher. It went from... It went from Epic Games to... Coalition. I think. Who kind of... Yeah, you can tell there's a, a big difference in the next three kind of entries. Um... But yeah, no, Gears of War 3 is great. I hate the Lambent. The Lambent are terrible enemies. Some of the worst enemies in Gears of War. I hate them. The way they just explode and disappear. And the way like the Lambent humans just kind of evaporate into dust when you kill them. It's so, so boring. But yeah, no, it was great. One of my favourite... I suppose it's probably one of my favourite campaigns of, of any series. I loved it. It was great. Phenomenal. Uh, Aftermath, probably going to put in C again. Uh, it didn't really do anything special. It's more Gears of War, which is great. Uh, it was actually a, a Judgment DLC. But it, it, it was alright. It was very quick. Very pretty, but very quick. Um, and you meet Paddock again and you learn a little bit more. So the story was alright. You know, I might put that actually in B. It was okay. But yeah, it's worth playing. It's very, very short. Um, we've done Aftermath. Yeah, we have. I beat it in an hour. So, take that for what you will. Oh, I need to blow my nose quick. going on here? Why are you down there? Hello? I don't need these on. Why am I wearing them? Right. We're back. Uh, what are we doing now? Uh, let's do Rhyme Shadows next. I thought that was A tier. I thought that was great. Um, I mean, it did bring back two of my like least interested characters in the planet in Kim and Ty. Um, and I hate I hate when people bring stuff, people back that are dead. Like Kim has been shoved in our face so many times. He's in every game in like the multiplayer and the horror mode. And he, it's like, why? Why do people care about Kim so much? He's boring. I don't understand. The same with Ty. Like Ty is in Gears of War Judgment. Why? He's boring. He's boring. What's the point? But Rom Shadow as a whole was great. Um, you're kind of playing through this really, really good looking city just before everything goes tits up. And like the locusts kind of appear. And then there are parts where you're playing as Rom. Um, 
I think I beat it in about two hours. It was an hour and a half, two hours. I did three parts. But the problem is, it was a prequel to Gears of War 1. So, with Ron being the bad guy, you already knew that you weren't going to kill him. So it defeats, like, this, the, oh, why are we scared? And, like, it adds two new characters in that we've never heard of before. In Merrick, uh, no, not Merrick. Is, yeah, Merrick and uh, Alicia. And it's like, yeah, well, these are probably going to die then because nobody knows who they are. And, well, do you know, one of them dies. And it's like, great. Um, but it was cool. It was interesting. Uh, there was a couple of cool boss battles in it. And like I said, the way it looks, it looks awesome. One of the coolest looking tile sets in a Gears game we've had in a long time. Um, and like I said, I mean, Keegan was a cool character. Or Merrick. What the fuck? Who is it? Is it Keegan or is it Merrick? Because I'm getting confused now. Michael Barrick, not Merrick, it's Barrick. Yeah. Alicia Valera, that's the one. So you get Kim, Ty, Barrick, and Valera. And yeah. Barrick was cool, like I said, I've read the comic where he sacrifices himself for Marcus. Because he gets Ross along, so he knows he's dying. So he sacrifices himself because he wants to go out on his own terms. Which was really cool. It's like, fair enough. You know, if you know you're going to die. Go out in your own kind of blaze of glory kind of thing. And he does that. But all in all, I had a really good time playing it. You know, there was no point in the game when it was like, eh, this is boring. And you get to play as Ram. And you can throw your little bats at people. And it's like, they're sitting on turrets thinking they've got you. And it's like, nope. Throw your bats at them. And that's that. Uh, Gears of War 4. Gears of War 4. Probably the campaign I've completed the most. I've completed this quite a few times. So I'm probably going to be a bit biased here. And I'm on an R in because I think Gears of War 4 is a really good campaign. So I'm going to keep it an S. I am. And that's probably going to piss a lot of people off. And you know what? I hope it does. But I, I really, really like Gears of War 4. I think Gears of War 4 is so much better than Gears of War 5 in the campaign. You know, you get characters back like Marcus, who's this big, grumpy, miserable man who lives on his own, who, like, works his way kind of out of his shell, in a sense, in the campaign, and becomes a bit more... I don't know what the word is, but he's a lot more likeable. And then you you meet, you know, Kate Diaz, uh, Del Walker, and JD Phoenix... In Gears of War 4, JD Phoenix is a really good character. They've really ruined his character in Gears of War 5. But, I mean, graphically, Gears of War 4 looks incredible. Um, when you're walking through, like, the like the castle place, and it's raining, and you can see the spots on your armor, and, like, you've got the glowing light. It looks so good. If you get a really good monitor. I mean, I've got a BenQ monitor. If you play this game on max graphics, it looks incredible. Absolutely incredible, and it's bizarre because I played Gears of War three on like, uh, like the backwards compatibility thing on Xbox, which is capped at thirty FPS for some reason. When you play through Gears of War three at thirty FPS, and then you go and play Gears of War four at sixty FPS, it feels amazing. It feels so good. But yeah, all the armor's cool. Um, introduced uh, a better horde mode, in my opinion. Gears of War 3 horde mode was cool. Gears of War 4 took everything and did it better, basically. Instead of being like stuck to static uh, defences, you can uh, put them where you want. And you, know, you can spend money to upgrade them. And it did have different classes, although they weren't really kind of that important. Not like Gears of War 5. Um, yeah, I really like Gears of War 4. Really do like this game. Gears of War 5 B is B. I did enjoy it, but there were so many things in it that really pissed me off. Um, they had such a good thing going with War 4, and then they took Gears of War 5 and just took everything back. And it's like, what are we doing? What are we doing, guys? 
So, where do we begin? We start the game playing as a different character for a start. You're playing as Kate Diaz instead of uh, Marcus. And I thought Kate Diaz was a pretty bad character in Gears of War 4. Not necessarily bad, but kind of meh. In Gears of War 5, she's a lot better. Uh, she's a lot more interesting. Like I said, especially when you go in into like the research facilities and you're learning about a backstory and her family and her bloodline and you know all that kind of stuff. Um, Jeff, not JD. Well, JD becomes an absolute asshole, but Dell becomes a lot better of a character. You know, he's a lot more interesting. He's a lot more calm, nice. He volunteers to go with Kate on a mission when no one else does, and. Yeah, he's a lot more uh, interesting in Gears of War 5. Whereas JD takes a complete nosedive off a cliff with four ton bricks strapped to himself. Because like, in Gears of War 4, he was really cool. He was interesting. He was nice. He was calm. He was a dick. But like to like higher ups, like he never listened. He never did what he was told. He was always getting moaned at. He was brash. Um... In Gears of War 5, he's just a complete dick. Like, you're learning about, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff about him ordering firing squads and certain people to get killed, and then he does his oh, I'm a hero thing where he tells Baird to Hammer of Dawn where his armor is and gets Lizzie killed. It's just a dick. Um, yeah, not interesting at all. Um, and it's a shame because... I said in Gears of War 4 is really cool. But, you know, that is what it is. The Horde mode is different. Um, it's a lot better than Gears of Well, it's, it's better and it's not. So, the upgrades and stuff are a lot more... Uh, not so much thought out and stuff like that. But it's most... It's the, the, the fabrication... Is that what you call it? Fortification system. We'll call it that. It's basically the same. Just you don't have the turret anymore. But you have the weapons lockers where you get your ammo back and your uh, you lose the turret, but you get the shock sentry. So you have a couple of different fortifications and stuff like that that you can build. You have tons and tons. You have too many classes, and they take way too long to upgrade. Like fair play to you if you've got every single class at twenty, because I've played the game for about twenty-eight hours as mechanic, and I'm only level sixteen. It's like, pfft, Jesus Christ, I'm not doing this for every single class because there's like 25 classes. No, thank you. But I really like the Horde mode. I would love to play Horde mode and stream it. I've said it before. I'd love to do that. Um, if only my internet would let me, I would do it a lot more. But it sucks, so I can't. But I definitely would because Horde mode is such a good stream game and... I would, I would love to play Horde a lot more than I actually can right now. But yeah, no, it was great. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not counting multiplayer in any of this, if you haven't noticed, because I don't play the multiplayer for Gears of War. I don't play Gears of Wars for multiplayer. I play it for PvE, you know, Horde mode and campaign. Hive Busters, S tier. Controversial? Maybe. I loved Hive Busters. I thought it was awesome. It lasted a while. It looked phenomenal. Graphically, it looks incredible. The light in the colours... Um, especially when you go you go to um, what's her name? Uh, it's not Lani. It is Lani? You go back to Lani's like island because she's like all this tribal. Got these, all these tattoos. You know, she comes from a village kind of thing. You're going back to her village, and the colours are fucking incredible. They're so pretty. And like you're going down the lava stream and you're flying on the beach and just graphically it looks incredible. Uh, the story was pretty interesting. Um, you're trying to take this like chemical bomb into like the heart of a swarm. Um, see if you can kill the swarm any easier. Um, and yeah, I thought I thought it was really interesting and. We still haven't played... I've still never played uh, Escape. I need to play Escape. But I want to do that for a video. Um, 
But yeah, it's really good. It doesn't last long. It's probably the longest DLC out of all of these. Um, most of the characters are interesting. You get Victor Hoffman comes back. He's okay. Hannah Cole is kind of meh. Uh, Lani and Keegan are awesome. I don't know who the... I think Mac. His name is Mac. He's terrible. He's just a dick for no reason. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. It is a really good game. It's worth playing. 100%. So yeah, that is my tier list. Like I said, there is not a bad game here. There, all these Gears games, I think they're on Game Pass. Um, I haven't played Tactics yet, so I wouldn't have ranked that even if I did. Um, but yeah, there's not a bad game. There really isn't. They're all good. 100% worth playing. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Like I said, that's a bit controversial. I think a lot of people will probably put Gears down here and Gears 2 up here. They wouldn't have Gears 4 there. You know, it is what it is. It's my tier list. So, if you don't like it, sling it. But yeah, that is it. Leave a comment down below. Let me know, you know, rank your games. Or do do this kind of video. Join my Discord. Send me a link to it. I'll watch it. I, I answer all my Discord messages. Yeah. While you're down there, leave a like and subscribe. You know you're wanting. Uh, if there's any other things you want to see me rank, I know we're doing a lot of tier maker videos at the moment, but I'm having fun doing these. You know, like I said, it's, it's easy. It's chill. It's calm. I don't have to think about what I'm doing as such. I just have to talk a lot, which I'm great at doing. So yeah, has been your boy. I hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one.